What's up guys, welcome to Wasted Space and we're back in Space Engineers and today's design is kind of inspired by what's been going on on my stream of late. So for those of you who haven't been watching that, I've been doing a kind of planetary survival scenario where me and a friend started off on a planet's surface with no jetpacks, with natural gravity on so all blocks have gravity affected. And we've been trying to see what it's like to survive on a planet's surface and try and get off of that planet. And one of the things that this has brought up is the need for things that go into space to be able to orbit the planet in order to stay in space. Because of course, planets have got quite large gravity wells and you need to be outside of that gravity well to not be affected by it. So anything stationary in space that isn't fixed to an asteroid or something is going to slowly get pulled in towards the planet. So before I dive into what exactly my creation's about, I thought I'd show you something interesting that I've managed to achieve with this creation for this week, which is if we look round there, I'm actually orbiting this little planet, and this is the planet from our stream currently, in a reasonably stable orbit. I've been going around quite a number of times trying to get this recording right, honestly, and it seems to be that this is now nice and stable. So just a little proof of concept, it is actually possible with NG to get into orbit, and there are certain criteria that I'll go into a bit later as to how you can go about achieving orbit, but I thought that was an interesting thing to start off with, and absolutely perfect for what this ship is designed to do, because this is a satellite. So this is a ship equipped with a jump drive that's designed to come in and arrive basically first when you start colonizing a new planet. This is the first thing to arrive, and it's going to act as the very basic support for everything you've got going on to and from the planet's surface. So as you can see, we're in orbit here, and you can probably start to guess what this is all going to be about from how it looks. So what I'll do is I'll just get a nice view behind it. Let's point ourselves kind of into the sun a little bit, and then I'm going to hit one on the toolbar, which just triggers everything to happen. So that's unlocking a set of landing gear, and these arms are going to start to unfold, and then once they reach the top point, they're going to start unfolding again. And I'm kind of pleased with this folding action, to be honest. Just, just how I've managed to get them to overlap and not interfere with each other. And also, as you're about to see, there's actually more solar panels there than it looks. Because there is a row underneath everything too. So that's all going to unfold and we've got a huge amount of solar farm power and a huge amount of oxygen farm power. And all of that is feeding into the bottom part of the body, which as you can see has got, well, firstly a lot of cargo space. All of these arms are made out of small cargo containers but also quite a lot of oxygen storage and quite a lot of battery storage you can just about see in the floor down there. But we'll do a tour of the ship a little bit later on. And then on the top we have a connector. And the only thing missing, because I'm in this sort of test world where I copy and pasted it in here just to see whether or not I could make the thing orbit, which of course the answer is yes. And I think, I think that rather looks the business orbiting there, the proper satellite style is in these little hangar bays which are down the centre I have a bunch of small craft which I'll show in the world in a little bit later that are just micro drone welders, micro drone grinders and micro drone miners all equipped with ore detectors and antennas and the idea is those would then be used to both maintain any ships coming up to use this platform to refuel or to transfer cargo or to recharge batteries but they could also be used to go and explore the planet that you would arrived at and get a sort of early idea of what exactly is going to be required when you come to colonise it and what exactly is on offer as far as ore is concerned, obviously. Aside from that, uh, let me close it back up again, because again, the closing process looks kind of cool. We get a different pattern out of it when we do it this way. Aside from that, there's not a huge amount more else to it. it the idea was that this was going to be your first stage, something that was going to act as a stopping point for small craft coming to and from the planet, and also as a docking and recharging point for any large craft making the journeys about in space. So it is equipped with its own jump drive, but the jump drive in this is designed to be getting it to the planet, help it set up, and then eventually move on once that planet is properly colonized or once everything's dealt with. It's not the quickest thing in the world, I will admit, so I don't think now I'm in orbit I will have that good a chance of escaping it, but that's the advantage of the jump drive. You don't need to get out of orbit, you just need to get into it in the first place. And then the other things on the bar, we have a number five, which turns all of our broadcasting, oh, and apparently I've got a whole bunch of rotors on, on the UI as well, but that will turn our broadcasting <coughs> on and off. Uh, and then, as you can see, we've got eight for our backup reactor, which we're currently not using. We've got gravity in here as well. And then nine is just an emergency lock that locks all of the connectors and all of the landing feet. Because for some reason or another, when you jump, it unlocks all of the landing feet, which is really annoying given that they said that landing feet was the best way of securing ships that you were going to jump with. So when they then get to the other end and unlock and float around inside all your hangar bays, it seems a bit odd. But anywho, 
I will, of course, stick this ship up onto the workshop, but before that, let's jump over and have a quick look at sort of how some of the rotating parts go together. So we're now in the world where I put this thing together, and one thing that I will mention is, to begin with, this thing didn't have four identical arms like this, and there is, the reason for that was I was having a lot of problem with the rotors causing an insane amount of jiggling in sort of the main body of the craft for no apparent reason. Uh, it wasn't sort of rotor displacement or anything like that, but the end result was initially these arms were sort of connector arms, they were designed for docking, and it meant that this single docking bit on the back is kind of an afterthought almost. I would have preferred something more meaty, something that could dock multiple ships at the same time. But perhaps I can save that for when I redo this because I'm also really wanting to do something with this that has kind of a drop pod functionality on the bottom of it for sending the initial craft down to the planet as well. But first things first, let me give you a quick sort of rundown of what's around in the craft and number one thing is those mini craft that I was talking about, the drones, this is obviously my original mini welder, it's kind of an old design but there isn't really much you can do to improve it, it's about as small as you can get for a welding design. All I've done change wise is I put some landing feet on it and I've put an ore detector, all of these have an ore detector, the idea being that they can help scout out the planet and they are all drones, nothing in here is, is player piloted. We then have a, well, sorry, that was the grinding drone, we then have a welding drone and then if we go down below we have a couple, oops, I'm out of the way foot, have a couple of these mining drones which are ever so slightly larger because they kind of had to be but they've also got a bit more cargo space as well so they're fairly practical little mining drones for your initial base setup. And then I decided I was going to make most of the bodywork out of this out of functional parts there's very little just blocks for blocks sake you know there are a few up and around here for uh, oxygen seals for example but other than that, the main structure of it is made out of these oxygen tanks and then a lot of small cargo containers, meaning that this thing's got a lot of cargo space, it's got a lot of oxygen tank space. Then, just before I show you how the sort of whole folding mechanism works, down here we've got the antennas and the laser antenna set up, and we've got the doors into sort of the cockpit area. And this cockpit area is a little bit odd in the while you enter it and everything in it kind of works this way up, in reality you pilot it looking downwards because that's the way round the ship flies otherwise. So you have a funny cockpit in the floor here which is accessible just fine and when you get out you land on the top of the seat here in the gravity. But then we also have an area up above where we've got this gangway so that you can access the sort of secondary cockpit and this again can be accessed from down below and you'll just drop out. We've got air vents, we've got a medical bay, and then we've got a programming block and some LCDs because I wanted to use Freya for this because it's a really, really cool script and it would have done the battery management and so on really nicely. But unfortunately, something seems to be broken with that. It sounds like Keen have changed something on their end and not really documented it or told anyone about it. So I can kind of feel the woes for that one. That sounds pretty horrible. But last thing I will show you if we pop back outside is how the whole folding mechanism works. So be a good boy and shut all the doors behind me and then pop up here. So we can just you can just about get an idea of some of it just by looking. So at the end of here we've got these twin rotational rotors and I haven't done anything with the rotor head displacement here. There's there's enough displacement just by putting them pointing opposite directions like that. But then I'm really making use of the fact that the solar panels don't take up an entire block's space. So if I just jump in here and it's all on timers, all relatively simple and trigger the not open one, close one is what we want. Trigger that now, you can see everything's kind of going to twist and it's all necessary that it's on slightly different heights. So everything is alternating, one high, one low, one high, one low. And it means that it can all pass over each other, not only when they're overlapping, when they're packed up, but also as they're unfolding, because they do actually interfere with the ones nearby as well. Now aside from that, there's not really much more complex to it. These sort of rotors here, the only difficulty here was trying to make sure that there was this proper gap in the middle that meant that the solar panels could come up both sides of the arm, which kind of took a bit of playing around with, but I began with the skeleton of it and then sort of expanded from there. So it was a little bit easier doing it that way rather than trying to retrofit this sort of thing onto an existing craft. And then some of the arms aren't quite so long because when unfolded, you'll see these solar panels are shorter down here. When unfolded, they would actually overlap the panels either side. So we don't need those ones. Aside from that, that's pretty much it for the folding unfolding mechanism. It was mostly trial and error as these things always are. So I'll just trigger it to open back up again. Down there, you can see the feet lock and unlock in the timer sequence as well. And there was a little bit of playing around to make sure these were in the right places, making sure that the rotor angles are correct. So the ones that lock on here 
go to 89 degrees and you can see there you go the the, the over under thing totally necessary with that many of them passing over the top of each other at any given time but yeah this one the one that comes down here is set to 89 degrees rather than 90 i think whereas the ones that come down here actually tuck into the sides of the vessel so they're set to 93 degrees you know it, it's a lot of trial and error just to get it to be nice and tight but i'm quite pleased with the end result and i don't think it's a particularly complex concept i just kind of been enjoying messing around with stuff to do with planets and what could be required when they arrive so I really hope you guys enjoyed this one, uh, just kind of getting back into the swing of things and you can expect more from me as regards to sort of a planetary fleet almost, looking towards what's going to be needed on a planet and what's going to work well when all blocks are being affected by gravity, not just mass blocks. So this is first step on that path. I'd be interested to hear if you guys have got any things that you think, wow, that's going to be definitely necessary. I wonder what Wasted could come up with for that or just what you think of this design. If you did like it, please hit like, please hit subscribe, it really helps me and the channel out. And otherwise, I'll catch you next time. And I just trigger this, which is gonna, ooh, I triggered the wrong one, which is gonna break it, is what it's gonna do. Uh, and there's no way I'm gonna stop it. Well, this is what it looks like when you trigger the wrong timer and all the solar panels come off, and then it's gonna collapse inwards on itself as all the other rotors work and make a massively horrible mess. Wee. <laughs>